Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Small Talk. I'm Amy, this is my partner Maggie, together Hello. we are Thinker Thema and this is the series where we take things a bit slower, have a bit of chit chat and then talk about five smaller games. Yeah. Um, normally we start this series with a bit of a postcard update, Yes. but the postcards are slowly started to dry Slow, up yeah. as you would expect because <laughs> yeah. everyone who was going to send us a postcard I think yes. has by now. Um, if, you, if you have sent us one and we haven't received it yet, don't worry, it could still be on its it way. It could still be on its way. Yeah, yes. but we thought we would start this episode with a bit of an apology. Maggie? Yes, I am mortified <laughs> that the last episode of Back Chat that we published last, last week, Monday yeah. or on Monday had a bit of a, a whoopsie in the end. It just kind of suddenly cut off uh, mid Amy sentence. It did, but it amused me that a lot of people stepped in to finish off my <laughs> sentence. <laughs> yeah, that, that was, was really the good. Best. I still don't know what happened and how that happened because mm. then, yeah, I kind of even went back and looked. But the, the issue, the reason why I couldn't fix it and re-upload it is because we then went away. Like we had to kind of yes. upload it, schedule it to release at the right time. Yeah. And we then, were in a bit of a rush to get it done because yes. we were heading away on holiday. We took some days yes. off. And so we both should have caught it before we before it was scheduled to go live. But, you know, these things happen. We checked everything and else. Maggie has been kicking herself about <laughs> yes. it. Like the whole time we've been I'm away, like, Maggie's been like, how, how did that happen? How? I was like, it was just the, literally, it was just the last like two minutes where I basically no. said, please like and subscribe to like, the video. It was like 40 seconds, <laughs> it was, two yeah. whole minutes. Oh, sorry. That would well, be even was, more mortifying. It was nothing. <laughs> it was, it, no one got to hear me say, please like and subscribe. Yes. <laughs> so. so we got no likes and no subscribe. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so yeah, that was the only thing. Maybe I should do it earlier. Please like this video if you yes, enjoy it. If you, if you enjoy <laughs> this content the last in minute. general, if you've seen us before, uh, even if you don't like this content, still hit the like. You know, <laughs> like, why not? Live, live I a little. Live on the edge. Yeah. Wonder if Maggie will just now cut me off whenever I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, Oops. I don't know why it keeps happening. I don't happening. know what happened. I just got rid of that last forty seconds. <laughs> you weren't going to say anything important anyway. No. Anyway, so we did. We went away. Yes. And uh, we actually went on a houseboat. Yeah. That was a new experience for yeah. me. Yeah. It was super fun. Yes. Um, we were on the, the Murray River, mm -hmm. which is basically on the border of um, Victoria and New South Wales. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's like if you're on one bank, you're in New South Wales. If you're mm -hmm. on the other bank, you're in Victoria. And um, these houseboats are incredible. They were, yeah. um, we didn't organize the trip. It was lovely that our, our friends who have been, you know, really looking, f they basically put all their energy into planning it while we we're in lockdown. Mm. Um, and we were able to go as a group of 10. Yes. And this yeah. houseboat had five bedrooms on it. Yeah, it's a feat all with of engineering. It, it is incredible. It is bigger than our actual home and it was more yeah. comfortable than <laughs> it was. Than our it was solid ground. It was real luxury. Oh, yeah. It was lovely. It was great. Um, yeah. And while we're on there, of course, we got to do a bit of fishing um, mm -hmm. and we also had to well we got to take a lot of board games we were put so our friends were very cute and they gave us all rolls so yes. when we arrived they actually put luggage tags on all of our bags and then they gave us a lanyard and mm -hmm. a, a name badge that we had to wear that had our role so yeah. mine was meeple master because i was told to bring <laughs> yeah. all the games yes and Maggie? i was first aid officer first aid officer I'm a nurse and uh, which yeah. actually needed use it, it actually came <laughs> it, it in did, handy it someone did, did handy. have a minor injury that i advised them he on. picked up a log from out of a fire um, which you shouldn't do. Which you should not do. Not and he advisable. put his hand on yeah. a very hot piece of wood. And unsurprisingly burnt himself. So, yes. so he know. had some blisters on his fingertips. But it was luckily a minor thing. So it yeah. was all good. Yes. Yeah. But Maggie is the person on the boat where every anything that happened, anything that went wrong, anything that anything broke. that a lot couldn't be opened or anything, <laughs> everyone's like, Where's Maggie? Where's Maggie? Yeah. So Maggie's very practical and And every time it happened, I was like, help. I'm not gonna be able to fix that. And it's like, oh, I fixed it. Oh, yeah, we, <laughs> we had a bit of an incident as well where we were headed straight for another houseboat yeah. they only really give you like a couple so you're 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 sailing this house on a river mm. but it's you know it's a wide river but it's not that wide like mm. you, you know you couldn't fit three of them across and yeah they give you like two minutes of uh driving lessons or sailing lessons no, like, i wasn't i wasn't the captain go. one of our friends had uh put their hand up to be the captain and uh, and then I'm like, oh, where you go? And so yeah, we were kind of 
sailing down the first corner. <laughs> the, first the very first corner <laughs> that we, had we to take. overshot the corner. Yeah. And Maggie, well, a lot of our friends were not very helpful, but Maggie was the one that mm. came to the rescue. And, yeah, because the it's... captain panicked. Yeah. <laughs> yes. What do I do? What do I do? And I was like, okay, remember the training. Just Throw it in reverse. reverse. <laughs> it was, what do I do now? And then it didn't help that then there was someone in the, the houseboat that we were coming towards who could see it coming and was just outraged going, ah, all these said, this rental, happens all the time. Yeah, all these people renting these boats are com- yeah. constantly crashing into me. And it's like, well, you know, sorry, we're learning. Mm. We didn't really get that much of a... We yeah. didn't really crash. No, we didn't. We just, like, we, we just kind of bumped. We averted it in time and it yeah. was just like a little... Yeah, like, and we were actually moving quite slowly, which was like that. was yeah. quite hilarious because <laughs> yes. I was sitting upstairs yeah. and watching us get closer <laughs> and closer to this other houseboat in slow motion. I was like, hmm, are we going to turn? Are we, we turning? Are we, we were turning? turning, but it was one of those, yeah, yeah. It, it turns like a boat. It turns from the back. So it's like instead of like when you're driving a car and, you know, you're steering from the front, you're actually steering from the back. So it takes a little bit to... It was, a bit of getting used to. Yeah, it was just that you, yeah, couldn't, you, you couldn't correct it. back. And no, it was hard to so correct. So my friend and I just got in the brace position <laughs> on, our sun lounge, that dramatic. on our sun yeah. lounges, but yeah. we were just sitting there in that the brace was... position and moving like extremely slowly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it was we pretty funny. We actually bumped harder when they took over, like when the people mm. that run it took over to like bring it in, like to, mm. like, to moor it. Because it has a full like, bumper around it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's like, not like... We didn't crash it. Like, we didn't damage any property. No, no, it's no. Fine. There was no damage. It's and there fine. was, yeah, yeah. But our friends were very cute in that it was like an adult camp. It, it was. was amazing. So every day we like got a new cruise. itinerary mm-hmm. that clipped onto our lanyard, and you could follow the day's events. Had all the meals planned yeah. out, and then we had events like origami lessons yes, together we did. and we had a taste test a blind taste test where our yeah. friend had, had brought all of these different foods they had 10 people you know like well, nine people lined up with blindfolds on and then fed them one by one and we had to write down what they were yes and maggie you did really well on that apparently i i i sort of give you all the kudos because i was not very uh palate informed before we got together and you've exposed me to a lot of foods and cuisines mostly asian and, food <laughs> not a lot of asian but yeah. like when we like usually i'd be the type to just before amy like if i was on a holiday or on a, on a trip i'd just go and eat you know the sort of more generic more you know chain uh food like i'll go to a mcdonald's or i'll go to a, yeah <laughs> while you're on amy, holiday <laughs> yeah whereas amy has kind of shown me and like whenever we go out we try and like eat some of the local foods or mm-hmm. not just some of the local foods like she will research detail research the best spots about all the, di- the specific di- dishes so it's like where mm. do you get the best version of this dish in this area and so yeah that's apparently helped develop i, my I wonder palate. if i'm going to be like that when i travel anymore because one effect mm. of covid that yeah. on myself has been a you complete plan. lack of planning yeah that's be- true before i was like an absolute planner to the nth degree and now i'm just like mm, i'm gonna see what happens I, I, uh, it's, it's shocked a lot of, of our friends when they turn up yeah. to our house expecting things to be Planned. planned and, and I'm like, like no. what do you feel like for dinner? Do whatever Just you like. Chilling. Make yourself at home. They're like, yeah. what? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I don't know what to do with myself. Uh, yeah, I think I think my my expectation is that you probably will have chilled mm. out in terms of the pre planning, but I yeah. don't think you'll leave a lot of the food up to chance. No, I probably won't. I'm gonna be like, we'll rock up to no, a food court and no, hope we for won't. the best. I really get like regret that. when I have a bad meal. <laughs> yes. Like I really feel yeah. like. And it's weird because you have thousands of meals in your lifetime. <laughs> but you like do. I have one bad meal. It's interesting. Like, I wonder how many, you know, uh, like you, when, when people do the maths of how many hours you'll spend at work, yeah. how many hours you spend sleeping. It doesn't matter how many there how many are. Meals. I don't want to waste any of them. Okay. Anyway. I want to miss a thing. So we went like on a that. boat. We didn't catch any fish. Um, That's not true. There were like Well, three. I didn't. You, oh, you didn't. didn't. Oh, I we didn't, didn't even try. Yeah. Yeah. Our friends caught us a couple of small ones, yeah. but we were pretty not that good at the fishing. But we did mm. have a yabby net and we caught some that prawns. Was very productive. Very productive. Very and fruitful. we were using that yes. to, to try and catch fish. Um, we should have just eaten them. Yeah. Because some of them were shrimp. Weren't they were shrimp. They were all yeah. shrimp. Yeah. And Crazy. then we were playing a lot of board games. Yeah. And just hanging out and cooking, watching movies. It was delightful. So it was really nice that we've been really busy. So it was yeah. nice to like slow down and have that time with friends. Mm. Um, and yeah, that's basically what we've been up to this week. And I feel like we both had 
too many board games and not enough board games. I had that thing of like, <laughs> yeah. we were like, oh, we're actually going to run out of board games that we wanted well, to no, play. Well, no, day one, you were like, we've overcommitted. Why have we brought so many games? And yes. then by day three, we're like, why didn't we bring more games? <laughs> yes. But then at the end of it, like I actually learned a lot of games. We played a lot of games. We did play a lot of games. But there was one that stayed unplayed. So there were a couple actually that stayed unplayed. Yeah, there so. were. But it was also difficult because there was an itinerary. Yeah, there were a lot of And we were just activities. trying to slot yeah. games in between. And then yeah. occasionally people were drinking. You know when you've got to match the right game to yeah. the right moment or occasion? Most of the games we played were where Maggie and I were actually kind of finding some quiet time away from yeah. the group and sitting down and playing a board game. Yeah. So... That was really nice. And um, I have some IAQs. Oh, let's let's so get let's to it. let's talk about some of those. Tell me some of these. Uh... Only a few this week. So if you do have an IAQ, please drop it in the comments this yes. week so that we can answer it next episode. Okay. Um, but the first one was actually directed at me, mm -hmm. which is from James. And James says, Amy, could you throw a game? As in... As in across the room? I think you're strong enough. I, I believe in you, babe. I think you could do it. Uh, uh, strong. Yeah. Um. Was it Burns? Like uh, Mr. Burns? Yeah, he yeah. does the baseball throw and it's like... Yeah. Um, as in, could I lose on purpose? And this is uh, a really interesting... Did you actually think it meant to throw a game? No, no, no. Oh, I, okay. know. I was just checking. <laughs> you I, know, really I knew it would be a different kind. I thought, I actually thought it, it was throw out. As in, I think, as in, oh, like, put okay. in the... In no, the, no, in the trash. As in, could I lose on purpose? And this is in interesting rubbish. because, no. Mm. I actually find it just... Even when she should... Even when Even there I is should. a big call. No, I can't. I just can't do it. I can't. I don't think that Even it's... Even when it would make everything easier or better. No. <laughs> Definitely sad. can't throw a game. Can't lose on purpose. You mm. know, and this reminds me of Survivor because sometimes when they really want to vote someone out, they throw a challenge. Mm -hmm. I think I could do it in that circumstance when there was an objective to throwing it. When it's like you're losing a battle to win the war. That's right. But... In mm -hmm. board gaming, no, because I I wouldn't want <laughs> because no board game is no. I'll tell you what, because I wouldn't want someone else to let me win. That mm. is for me a very hollow, like unsatisfying win. Mm. I I want to beat someone when they're like trying their hardest, and there's a lot you know, at stake. Yeah, there's the, a lot. Yeah, of, yeah, there is. But the exception is when I'm teaching a game, and I never throw. I still never throw a game. But mm. when I'm teaching a game or with beginners. I will more likely help them win. So I'd be more likely to be like, oh, you should do this because that's more optimal. Or maybe you could think about these options. Yeah. And then I would lose because I'm helping someone else. Mm -hmm. Not because on my turn, I'm going to be like, oh, I should take that, but I won't. No. I will definitely. This, I know this wasn't a question for me, but I will definitely throw a game. Even one of these games, I wasn't, I wasn't, <laughs> yeah. I wanted to throw it and I wasn't kind of allowed to. Yeah, and Amy wouldn't. I was like, and I why was would like, you do that? No. And I was like, well, then I went, I, it, you know, it's one of those cowards things where I was like, well, then I won't touch the piece. Like, you'll, and she's like, so you did this move and you did this You actually move. walked away from the I was table. I like, nah, this is. Anyway, yeah. we'll talk about that when we, we get will. to the game. We but will. yeah, no, I, I, I can't throw a game. Maggie will very happily I throw a game. I love throwing games. <laughs> I love throwing I games. I do because for two reasons. One, it alleviates any anxiety that I could possibly have about winning. Like, because I do sometimes, particularly like when I'm playing with you, I never really throw a game when it's with you. But if we are in a group no, setting, I no, I, I don't need to throw a game because she beats me pretty much every time. Um, but when we're playing yeah, in a group, it's like I, I love... Well, one, it, mean, it means that I'm not stressed about like, well, if I didn't win, it's like, well, I didn't really try or I actively made some suboptimal decisions. Hmm. And it's usually because the secondary purpose, which is really the main purpose, is because I want someone else to like have a good experience or have like a satisfying, oh, you know, that was really good. Mm. Or I was really like, that made me feel good or that made me feel happy about that. And so that, that trumps for me any, like when you actually win, it's like, to me, and again, this is my personal experience, very different to you. Like the the act of winning is so it it's transient, and it's just like a huh. It's it's nothing. It's like it's a nothing sort of hmm. thing. All its value is internally based on some arbitrary thing that mm. we've set up mm. it's a, it's actually a nothing it's a nothing thing mm. all the value is in what we give it i, I hear what you're saying it's nothing i'm just gonna <laughs> i said nothing it's not nothing if you love winning i'm you know i'm is not that trying why you to get like, so grumpy when i beat you every time i 
don't get that grumpy because I think so grumpy. It's already I happened used to. like two or three times today. <laughs> that's true. That is true. I wasn't grumpy. I was like, ah, you win again. <laughs> it is, but it's like, it's like, what does it even mean? It doesn't mean anything. No, it's it like, doesn't mean anything. And I like, I don't like, yeah, I won, and then think about it forever. Oh, I'm so great, I won. I, but I do like to feel like everything I did in that game mattered hmm. because I won. <laughs> do you feel wow, that like, says a lot about me? Do you life. feel like if you if you lose a game, then everything you did in that game didn't matter? Uh, I still can enjoy the game if that's what you're okay. asking. Do you have, as in, do you have, because I'm thinking like there could also be lessons in that. Even if you don't win it, it's like, well, you can still win or learn a lesson. Yeah, I learned not forward. to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that again. That's a yeah. losing strategy. But sometimes you can learn from how someone else's strategy played out and go, oh, that was an interesting element that I didn't expect would yeah. play out I just way. rather crack the code of like mm. what it is. Mm. It's like a same, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. Mm. interesting. I mean, strength profile, competitiveness is my yeah, number one. Yeah, number one. So it's to be expected. Yeah. Okay, next question. <laughs> Um, Hannah asks, do we throw out our expansion boxes? That's a great question. I no. can't bring myself to do it. No, we have never thrown Even out a single expansion every box. Every time I consolidate, I'm like, ugh, like it's so annoying to have an empty box. Yeah, but so I we do put can't... the expansion into the base yeah. game when we can, then but we then we keep the empty box on our shelves. Yeah, which is very annoying. It's annoying to have an empty box, but I, yeah, I just can't bring myself yeah, to why? throw it out. Why don't we throw them out? I because I think it's like a thing and it's beautiful usually and it's like, yeah. But also then if you want to it sell represents it, what, like what we if have, we ever yeah. want to get rid of it, That's like true. I want to be able to then split it back. So even if you're selling it together, like yeah, I don't know if the other person wants to keep them separate or what they want to do. So that's... Look, I recently sold mm. Great Western Trail and while mm. everyone's like, <gasps> just so that I could get the new edition, mm-hmm. but it did... We had the expansion, Rails yeah. to the North, yeah. and luckily we kept the box because the person I sold it to actually did want the box. Right. And so I sent an empty box to them with the, the game because yeah, it was right. all packed in one box. So yeah, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Proof in points. But so, I actually like having them on the shelf. Like I like seeing them as a collection. Like I was thinking about... I don't. I would actually prefer to just have the mm. one of each. I don't actually oh, like... Really. So, yeah. I really like seeing... Like if we think about the like reviews... Like me and Mini did. Me, you know how it's always like... And it's like it's it's almost looks like it's the same game twice or three times. But is that... No, I would rather have what feels like unique, big elements hmm. i like seeing all the tapestry ones together for example i really mm. kind of like that i was like oh that feels like a nice set you know? yeah 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 i They're probably very colorful. because yeah probably because the maybe because with that one i don't mind as much and i think maybe it's because the thickness of the boxes are quite similar <laughs> i think it's a visual thing for me yeah no, like not <laughs> Well, not the main tapestry, but the, the two expansions. Oh, the two like, expansions. Yeah, they're quite thick. Yeah. What I don't enjoy is like when you have a really slim mm. expansion, and so you have like a chunky main game and then slim expansions. I'm mm. not. It's... And also, I would say that this might all change when we actually consolidate all of our games onto one shelf. Yeah, at the, the moment, they're just everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. So you don't really see them all together That's very true. often. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll suss that out when we build our shelf or get a shelf. Okay. Um, um, Okay, next question. Mm. Darlene asks, Ooh. what out-of-print game would you want to see reprinted? This one's really hard. This is hard because I never know what's out of print. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I just know a game when it turns up at the door. Yes. Because Amy's ordered it or because I've, you know. And usually when I, it's very rare that I'll find out about a game or want a game and it's out of print. I usually mm. seem to like the more mainstreamy sort of stuff. Yeah. Or stuff that for whatever reason, I, I usually tend to like the high aesthetic stuff, so things that are really mm. beautiful to look at, and f- it seems to go hand in hand with things that are usually in print. Although, having said that, Sleeping Gods, Sleeping Gods, oh, that was hard to get because it was print. Kickstarter. It's just, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's not yeah, that it's not out, out of print. print yeah. But yeah, just not. That's just too. It was too early. Yeah, to and also and because I think for something to be out of print, usually it's going to be an older yeah. thing, and so I, and again, I'm I'm more sort of. I hate saying this because I'm so old and I shouldn't be saying this, but vibing with the newer aesthetics. I am so sorry. I apologize in advance that I use that word um, because I yeah, feel I'm too old to be using vibing. But yeah, I really do like I resonate more with the newer art. 
Yeah. I, but like aesthetic and artwork. Yeah, because I feel like backfilling your collection with older games mm -hmm. is more of a collector's thing. And for me, it's more actually about the discovery of the different mechanics, weirdly. Because mm. it's like back then, I don't know. I don't know if they were, I'm, I'm sure I'm wrong. But I feel like a lot of the stuff, the older games. Yeah, because they introduced for, new things that yeah. now you see replicated I'm, in I'm, newer games. I'm rarely into the, it's it's rarely about the theme. Yeah. Because a lot of times they're dry euros. It yeah. seems to be more about the, oh yeah, that was interesting because of XYZ. Mechanic wise, yeah. And for me, I would say that a lot of games that I, you know, had on my list have been reprinted recently. So mm. um, a lot of like Uve games that were kind of out of print, like I think Aura at Labora was mm -hmm. out of print, which right. we now have a copy of, yeah. and like Glass Road is getting a reprint. And there's just all these games that have kind of people have wanted enough and mm -hmm. asked for enough that yeah. are now coming back into print. A game that I would love to get my hands on is Glory to Rome mm -hmm. um, by Carl Chad Chadwick. Um, Chaddick, Chaddick mm -hmm. from uh, Innovation, because Innovation mm -hmm. is just a oh, game yes. that is yes. just this like curiosity to us. Yeah, it's such a <laughs> a wee, bizarre little thing. Bizarre yeah. thing that just is like almost its own category of game. I don't even know what to do with it, but and I don't even know if we love it or hate it, but it is there. It's got its and every time I see it, it gives me warm feelings. It's like at its weird moments. It does. It's, it's got its place. Intriguing. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I thought, it would be great to try his game that I believe was designed uh, with someone else. Mm. Um, okay. Yeah, so that's one of them. I'm trying to think of other ones. When we were in Spain, we picked up Goa, which has been out of print for a long time. And yeah. so we're really lucky to get that. We For a long time, I wanted to get a copy of Russian Railroads. And then I yes. managed to get a copy of that. So I have chased down games um, yeah. in the past. I think also often what happens with those older ones is like we get them and we play them a few times and then you kind of like they sometimes can feel like oh yeah like that mm. those mechanics because they kind of had their place those mechanics and the way that those games work have almost been kind of copied or and replicated yeah. and evolved yeah so now you often have feel like or oh, this is how i feel i often feel like i've played like more interesting or more engaging versions of those core things yeah but i i like that yeah, i feel the collector. history of them that yeah. yeah it's like oh this is where that idea first came from yeah. that's really cool and then it sits on my shelf and i'm like oh what a great collection yeah so you don't get that so much no no <laughs> i would throw it across the room no <laughs> you would throw a game yeah. um anyway those are all the iqs we have um yeah. If you have a question for us, do drop them in the comments. If I've missed your question, I apologize. I have been a bit slow on the comments lately. Things Life has gotten a bit busy yeah, uh, out of lockdown. Yeah, it's tricky now. Yeah, yeah, and in the lead up to Christmas as well. So please drop them down again. But otherwise, we should talk about some games. And these oh, yes. are some of the games that we mm. actually took with us on the boat. All right, so let's get into it. Yeah. How about Wild Space? Oh, yeah. So Wild Space. Wild Space is that was an interesting one because in Wild Space you have you're a commander. I, I think again thematically, uh, I like the aesthetic of this game. Like I actually really like the way it, it looks. You are these different animals in space, and you're all um, you kind of have your your captain of your your ship, but then you're going to be allocating or sending all these ships to all these different planets. Mm -hmm. And so ultimately it's, it's really abstract. There's no more theme than like set collection and <laughs> victory point gathering. Yeah, really. but, but, I, I, but they're animals. It's like wild, wild animals. Yeah, but it's, it's quite clever because most of this game is just a few bits of cardboard and cards and it's in quite a small box. But the, the idea of the game is to create sets of different types of animals. So you can either collect um, one of each of the six types of animal to get a lot of points, or you can you can focus on, you know, trying to get lots of one type of animal, which is also going to give you a lot of points at the mm. game. But what's really interesting about this mechanically is you have the planets, you have two starter planets at the start of the game that everybody can access because yeah. you start with one captain. And what you're going to be doing is playing cards in front of you that represent new members of your crew mm -hmm. that are going to enable you to travel further into space because you need more manpower 
apparently to get to different planets. Mm -hmm. And so as you get three, six or nine crew members um, or cards down in front of you, you're going to be able to reveal new planets that only you can access if you've got the right number of crew members. Mm -hmm. So if I had nine, I could access a planet before Maggie if you only had seven, for Mm -hmm. example. Um, but what you're going to be doing on these planets is placing a worker. So this is a worker placement or game. Or landing your ship. <laughs> you're landing your ship worker. Yeah. And yeah. so your ship worker gets placed out onto the planets. And what's interesting about this game is you'll have exactly 10 turns in this game. And the way that this works is you'll be able to put your spaceship out on five different spots on a planet. Each planet has two different worker placement spots. You'll be able to put five workers out and then those five workers are going to slide up to or explore the planet. <laughs> Thank you for translating into theme in case this theme is in out case there. You're listening. all lost yeah. in terms of what's happening thematically. Yeah. So each planet is really in four parts. You're going to choose one of the bottom parts to, to land on first. And then when you explore, you are sliding your worker up, your spaceship up mm-hmm. to the top part of the planet. And then that you're done. Like you cannot move that worker again. That worker is that space ship is it's spent it's yeah. spent and you're out of commission you're done with that mm-hmm. but what's really interesting is each of the planet initial spots where you land gives you a different action and most of the actions in this game are pretty simple either you're going to be playing a card out of your hand into your like tableau in front of you um, or you're going to be uh, able to pick up new cards either from the marketplace or from uh, the top of the deck and the The cleverness of this game is in the combos that occur. And because what you're trying to do is elongate every single one of your 10 turns to maximize the number of cards that you're going to have down in front of you. Some of the cards have animal, well, have those animals on them that are going to enable you to get points of set collection at the end. Some of them actually have end game scoring conditions um, that are going to mix up the way different people score. Yeah. If you've got the majority of a certain type of career or type of card combo, all mm. of all of these different things. Um, and yet the, the thing is, is when you play a card, sometimes it has a condition on it that says well if you've played this type of card or if you've got a um like this type of career down in front of you or yeah yeah then you'll be able to play another card or Mm. then you'll be able to pick up three more cards and so what you're trying to do is chain together Mm. um a whole series of cards and so when i first played it i was trying to put down as many cards as i could quite quickly then i realized it's actually better to pick up as much as possible because you have no hand limit and then chain together as many cards as you can you can have one of those super combo this triggers this triggers this triggers this and then before you know it you've put you know four or five five cards down yeah and if you you know how we play you would know that that means me going maggie maggie watch my turn maggie watch this turn it's gonna be so good (laughs) maggie 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 stop look at your head it's like the kid that's like mom 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 look at me i'm gonna do this thing so it's fine it's i play like five cards in a row look what i did um yeah so So if someone else didn't see it it didn't happen (laughs) that's right Yeah. yeah Um, So that is the aim of this game. We played it at um, the full five players. It's one to five. We played Mm -hmm. it at full five players when we were on the boat. Yes. And our friends that we played it with, um, I wouldn't say they're like heavy gamers. They're kind of stretch to mid yeah um and, party to mid yeah and mm. they enjoyed it but i think it was maybe a little too thinky because yeah. it's like a, it's a bit thinky it's a bit thinky yeah i actually found it satisfied i found even though it's very abstract there's no real theme that comes through in terms of like in a thematic sense mm. because the aesthetic was so appealing to me like the colorfulness of it and the just i really enjoyed the the yeah the artwork on it yeah. i found it really enjoyable to play and i i enjoyed the the puzzle at its core so yeah yeah i, I, I had a good time i found it a little simple for mm. my taste i felt like it was maybe too complex for them and a bit yeah. too simple for us the weird it was spot. <laughs> yeah yeah and I also felt as though I wish the planets, the worker placement spots had a bit more variation. Yeah, um, they're quite seen. Like a little bit more interesting because it felt like when I I had a bigger crew, I wanted something really powerful to happen Mm. and that didn't didn't really come true. Um, It says 30 minutes on the box. I felt like it was quite a bit longer than that at five players. Our friends are a little slower because they're not used to gameplay so much. But I did feel like even when we played it too, it would probably be just on that 30 minute mark. Yeah. I really liked it at two. I preferred it at two. Um, 
I um, I enjoyed it equally at two okay. or at, at the higher player mm-hmm. count. I played it solo. Uh, and the solo, again, it's a fine solo. You've got a little AI. You can uh, shift the difficulty based on these different cards. So the AI just has, uh, yeah, cards, which are the planets that it's going to be landing on. And you get to kind of control which of those essentially uh, the timing of of the movement of their ships into the onto those planets it was it was fine it wasn't super arduous but it was enough of a distraction for me that again like i don't like having to facilitate an ai i mm. prefer games where you're pretty much just playing your same game and th- to be fair that ai as i said it's it's fairly low uh, maintenance and it's mostly just interacting with the market so it's helping it's it's getting cards from the market which is going to help it score at the end and it's also refreshing the market for you in a mm. way um so and you do because you you know you, you can sort of decide which you usually have two different cards um as your options to to move you you can kind of see what's going to be better for you sometimes if i wanted to refresh the market i would then kind of land uh, their ship onto one of the planets where there would be a lot of activity on the market. So it, it was fine. It's not something that I would play solo myself because again, it's fairly abstract and that little bit of facilitating that turn mm. distracts me enough to make me go, no, I'd actually just rather play multiplayer mm-hmm. and be able to just focus on my own game. I was thinking actually this would be quite a good game. It's 10 plus, but I think a 10 year old would easily be able to play this. Yeah. I yeah. think that it, it'd make for a great family game. And the reason why I say that mm. is because I think the reason why it doesn't resonate as strongly with me is the lack of player interaction. So yeah, there's really no player interaction at no, all. No, even the worker placement work, spots, yeah. there's no competition. No. You can yeah. go out wherever you like. You might have someone who can get to a planet and you can't, but that doesn't really no. impact you in any as way. As soon as you or, have enough cards, you can get to that planet as well. Or someone takes a card that you need from the market because Which they can so see bad. that you use it. But really, it's yeah. like such low interaction. That's probably why I enjoyed it more because I yeah. never felt that sense of stress of like, ah, oh, yes. you know, someone's going to mess up with my game. Yeah, like, whereas yes, I like... You get to kind of do your own thing. Yeah, whereas I like that competitive yeah. stress. Um, but if you enjoy a game where you get to experience like triggered combos then yeah this game uh, might be for you and that is wild space yeah all right which one should which we one should do next muffin about time, muffin time. Yeah. so muffin time is a party game <laughs> there is no way around it you can tell you can tell by you can just tell by the way it looks it's yeah fun. yeah that it's like we've had this shiny. game for so long we've had it for so long it was a kickstarter mm. um by big potato games um and Muffin Time is a game that is something that you bring out. It's kind of like unstable unicorns Mm. or exploding kittens. Definitely in the genre of those games. The aim of this particular game is to start your turn with 10 cards. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's how you win. But in this game, you are going to be able to set traps, which are cards that are placed face down in front of you that get activated when someone does something around the table. And that might be to do with the game Mm -hmm. um, or it could be something completely unrelated. So someone eats a snack or someone sings out Mm -hmm. loud. And so it's great when you've got that like kind of louder and envi- party yeah. environment where people are kind of playing but also doing you know yeah kind you're of kind of socializing and... at the same time as yeah. yeah because it's like the next person to laugh out loud will trigger this trap yeah, yeah. Um, and when someone does it's quite hilarious because you get to flip this trap mm. and then some they get impacted in some way yeah so the first thing you're doing is you're setting traps Then on your turn, you only get to do one of two things. You can draw a card from the top of the deck or you can play an action card and resolve its ability. Um, However, these cards are really chaotic. So I guess the objective is to get to 10 cards. So you always want to be picking up, Mm. but there's such strong actions on the cards that it's always really tempting to play an action card instead and actually use a card from your hand. And the cards are just... Things like they have some mini games. So some of the funnier ones is, you know, you play a card and and it says the last person to stand up Mm. has to draw three cards. So suddenly someone will stand up and everyone like realizes what's going on and Mm. everyone jumps up or the last person to touch the card. That was another Mm. funny one. So there's just like all of these chaotic things, the mini games. And then there's just direct like take that kind of 
cards, like direct conflict. I'm going to steal three cards from mm -hmm. you. And then there's also counter cards that you can have in your hand yeah. um, to stop those, those actions yeah. um, hurting you. Now, what's interesting is we brought a lot of games onto the boat. Yes. Um, and this was everybody's favorite <laughs> game. By the winner. And you know when you're a gamer, you're just like, oh, that uh, hurts yeah. me. Yeah, it's like the that party game me. was the more popular yeah. game. But at the same time, it's like, what is the objective of a board exactly. game? It is to, you know, bring get people together. Bring people together, yeah. put the phones away, have some yeah. fun. And this game got a lot of laughs. I found it really enjoyable. It probably yeah. overstays its welcome. Like it's quite yeah, it's a little bit longer than it needs <laughs> it's to. It's way for longer than one it should game be. session. Like for each individual yeah. game. Yeah. Because then there's things that make it like you know, there's some cards that be like, well now it's whoever has the fewest cards or it's yeah. like whoever has no cards. Or, and, and so you just it's have to be changing. There's the no strategy. Play. There's no, no strategy. There's no way that you there, can there are get cards where it's like it everyone time. put throw their cards away and start the game from scratch. So yeah. it's like crazy chaos. chaos but what was fun right. is like one of my friends who was sitting next to me just at, at some moment he was just having so much fun and he just turned to me and he was like I don't even care about winning I just want it to go on forever and I was like <laughs> it's already been going on for a long time <laughs> yeah, and I wish is, it would stop no which again, it's, it's like, interesting because it's like if it's if you're not a gamer and you enjoy the party aspect of it like you love this like as a gamer it's like we're more enjoying like I wasn't so much enjoying the game I was having a good time with the game but I was more enjoying the fact that you know yeah everyone around me is enjoying themselves yeah. but the game is not really as satisfying because there is no strategy it's just like chaos for the sake of chaos no, yeah. and like the funny thing about like setting off the traps and yes you know kind of going oh because yeah. sometimes it's about like you, you have to trick someone into doing something so maybe like trick someone around the table into saying something in a foreign language or yeah. like you know say hello to someone or and get high them to five say someone you're and, high yeah, five yeah. someone yeah and so i think um you know we got the kickstarter version which came with a whole range of expansions which we mm. just threw in we shuffled them all in yeah. And I would say that the one thing is like, as I played it more and more on the boat, and I think Maggie gave up on it quite early and I was still <laughs> playing a lot of games with everybody. Um, the one thing is like, once you've seen a lot of the trap mm. cards, then when people are attempting yeah. to do something, you already know like, that that's a trap card. So yeah. after a while, you know, you'd probably have to put it away and then get it out again once you've forgotten yeah. what all those things are. But in, if you're looking for a game like to play at Christmas with, you know, your family and people are having a drink and, you know, yeah. a good time, um, this this would certainly be one to yeah. try out and that is uh, muffin time yeah all right next one the next game is called imotep so an imotep the you, duel duel the duel importantly yes, it's not, not the big yeah. big uh, version of imotep imotep the duel in um in this game you are essentially helping build all sorts of different uh, temples and you know pyramids and collecting relics and there's there's a really interesting little kind of central board of uh, what would you call it? it's like a little three three by three grid, grid. Yep. and you have all these different boats and so you're going to be sending out your workers to all these different locations and then unloading boats and getting some of that cargo onto your uh, your board um, or your kind of modular board and every single I just item it has boats and we took it on a boat. I didn't even make that connection. Yeah, look at that. Anyway. I didn't either. And so that, even though we're like, we kept kind of moving the boats around. It's like, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, didn't even make that connection. Mm. But yeah, so you've got all these different boats with the cargo. Once you get the cargo, then you allocate it to the right spot. And so it's, again, it's not a, um, a hugely thematically immersive type game. It's very much just like a series of little puzzles and then trying to optimize the points because all of the, the different cargo go in different areas and they all have different scoring yeah. conditions. Yeah. yeah, so the the tension is is that you can either put a worker out onto the grid or you can trigger one line or yeah, one row or boat. column to unload the boat and and depending on where your position is on the board you're going to get that tile yeah the tiles then fill your individual player area mm -hmm. and there's different scoring conditions and i interestingly like this is phil walker harding so that's mm -hmm. um why we you know yeah. got this game because australian australian yes. designer which is wonderful um we haven't played imitep no. the actual big, big board game, game. Yeah. Um, so can't compare it to that. But as in and of itself, this was a game that I didn't like at first. Yeah, I felt underwhelmed at first. Underwhelmed well. at first, yeah. yeah. I was just like, I don't really get this, but I felt like, and it was a bit fiddly because you're constantly yes. unloading the boats and then loading them the up with tiles. more tiles. Yeah. But we got faster at it. And the more we played this game, the more I've, it's actually grown on me. Mm. I really like, um, so there's objectives on one 
the play individual player objectives or the way the tiles are going to score have two sides an a side and a b side and the a side to me is obviously meant to be like the beginner yeah more straightforward more straightforward you score it's a bit easier to score Mm. when you turn over to the b side it's much more punishing because there are negative Mm. points if you don't do certain things and um only the first player to do certain things is going to get yeah lots of points so i that side was much more competitive and crunchy and i enjoyed that much more the b side of all of the objectives um but yeah as we played it more and more i I actually it actually really grew on me yeah because i think once you understand what the different scoring conditions are again that's that's when i felt like I could think, oh, okay, well, let me try this strategy. Let me go strong on these relics one, or let me go strong on the pyramids, or let mm. me go. Whereas when you first kind of start out, or even just in the A side, it's just a bit of a, a, is it a splatter of points everywhere? For me, it was also like realizing that you really want your opponent to trigger the boats. Uh, is this, this is probably going to be one of those moments where I'm like, <laughs> is that a thing? I did clue into the fact that it is better. It is not so much because if, if they're triggering your boats, <laughs> babe, you trigger my boat. Um, if they're triggering your boats, it means that often they might be triggering in the, in the wrong direction. So you might have been hoping when you, that's the other thing, when yeah. you place a worker, they could trigger one of two boats often. So, yeah, the they're on a, an, an axis. Mm-hmm. And so often what would happen for me is you would trigger the, the, the different directions, yes. which means that when you're placing the worker, you kind of yes. have to hedge your bets and go, yeah. oh, if this I were to get, get either of those this pieces. other way, yeah. would I be comfortable or happy with that as an alternative? And that's what I started to really enjoy yeah. is like, triggering a boat when I knew Maggie needed the other boat (laughs) so that was really satisfying so that she couldn't get the piece she wanted Mm. but then also trying to play the long game of placing more meeples rather than triggering boats because it's actually if you trigger a boat that's your whole turn Yes. So it's a waste of a turn in a way. I did clue into that yeah. like later on, yeah. one of the later games. So I was like, wait yeah. a second, it's so, better to, yeah. Yeah, so at first you just feel Play like, smart. oh, I'm putting meeples out and then I'm getting tiles back. And it's mm. not super interesting at first, but the more you play it, yeah. And once you're playing with another skilled player, it does mm. get more complex. Yeah. And yeah, I, I quite enjoyed it. Like now, at first I thought, there's no way we'll keep this game. Mm. And yeah. now I'm like, I think we'll keep this game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's again very abstract, so it's not something that I'm like, ooh, can we play this game again? Because again, there's not mm. a lot of theme for me to dig into. I like into. these little Cosmos two-player games, though. They're quite good. Yeah, yeah. It's but it's more like a little, yeah, it's a nice little puzzle yeah. for two. Absolutely. And this, this feels like actually a combo, like a combination of puzzles. Mm. So it's like, yeah, pick your strategy. I like so it. Let's yeah. Imhotep the Duel. Imhotep the Duel. The next game is... <laughs> Yeah. Well, we're talking about games that are hard to come by. Um, this was another one mm. um, by Sashi and Sashi, a um, Japanese publisher. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is Let's Make a Bus Route. Route. And route. 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 Let's, depending on where you are. Mm. And this is actually the Kyoto edition. That's so, yeah. yeah. So, what's, yeah. What's the other edition? So, special. This is a special edition. Yeah. I believe the other one is in Tokyo. Tokyo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah and so sense. we only have the Kyoto special edition, which is mm. the 90th anniversary edition yep. that we purchased in Japan. We did because <laughs> when we were over there, and when we got this, um, so this is this one's from t- 2018. When we went over and got this, it was in a, a period of our lives where we were into board games, but nowhere near what we're into board games no, now. And I knew that this was one of those games as a collector yes. that you wanted to like try and hunt down and find and buy mm-hmm. in Japan if you were there because it was harder to find. It's, they're getting easier to find now um, outside of Japan. I know BGG stocks a lot of, yes. a lot of their games such and, and, such and things, yeah. but it's still pretty hard to track them down. Mm. Um, so we picked up this game in Japan and this is a roll and write. And it's a pretty cool one at that. It's flip and very, write, technically. Oh, yeah. flip and write, yeah. yeah. Um, but the way that it works is that you're both, you both have a bus. Yes. Um, or who, whoever, however many players, how many players, two to five people mm. have a bus. And you're going to be tracing or drawing a um, your bus route on a shared board, which makes mm. it interesting in the roll and write genre because yeah. you're all contributing to a central board, which is a map in this case of Kyoto. 
And it's, you're going to be driving around mm -hmm. and trying to pick up passengers. You're yeah. going to be seeing sights. You're going to be doing all these things that a bus normally would. <laughs> yeah, taking up tourists, tourists around. Picking up students and hopefully dropping them off mm -hmm. at schools. Yeah. Um, but the difficult part is that you will be flipping a card each time that will give you a certain number of like pieces of road. Yeah, based on the color. So there's like all these different colors and each color will have a combination mm -hmm. of movements that you have to take. So that's the movement that has to be the number of steps and the shape. Yeah. And there's only a finite number of each mm. card. There's only two of each card that go into the deck. So you know that um, if there's one card that's going to trigger three straight pieces mm. of road, then that's only going to come up twice. Yeah. And so that's a really interesting puzzle because now you're thinking about like, well, how many opportunities am I going to have to mm. get everything done that I want to get done? Of course, there are different um, ways to score. You'll be crossing things off your individual player board that are going to give you um, more points for the more of one type of thing you can get done. So for example, there's some like, I think elderly passengers yeah. and the more that you pick up of that type of passenger, the more points you're going to get. Interestingly, there's some that when you go past, um, for example, uh, what's the pedestrians? Yes. As you're picking up pedestrians, you're trying to take them to, or commuters, you're trying to take them to the train station. And so you're collecting them. But as soon as you go past a train station, mm. you're going to have to score those points. So it triggers the, yeah. the um, scoring um, whether you want it to or not. Yeah. And likewise, you can pick up like the tourists and as soon as you reach a tourist destination, it's mm. going to score. The other thing I like about this game is that you have a secret objective. I, I always love something, <laughs> an objective, something yeah. that I need to get done. Um, and usually this is, this is around... Um, getting to a certain number of stations. So mm. it'll be, you need to get to the A station, the C station and the G station. And they're going to be quite spread out on the board. So it yeah. kind of gives you a path that you need to try and map in order to get more victory yeah. points. And then there's two public objectives as yeah. well. And so the first person to achieve that is going to get 10 points and then every subsequent is going to be six points. So some real classic um, roll and write type yeah. things. Um, but this was quite advanced for its time yeah um, yeah because yeah. i feel like it might have been the first roll and write or mm. one of the first yes i think definitely. maybe welcome to would have been our first flip and write no and this feel, was before that really yeah definitely yeah wow yeah. so yeah i think this is yeah this was quite ahead of all of the it was yeah. definitely well before the the onslaught um or the avalanche definitely of, yeah it really um, kind of defined the and genre and, and i yeah. think that's why it's so collectible because mm. people kind of want to own it in terms yeah. of the complexity um it is lighter than yeah. other roll and rights or flip and rights in our collection but yeah. there's still enough here i think to satisfy a gamer um like it's it's a nice introduction into the genre yeah, it's cute and there's enough well. going on i yeah. really like that you can't cross back over your own path mm. um but you can cross over with other people however yeah, that creates parallel yeah, yeah that creates people. congestion and so traffic. then you get traffic mm. points that you don't want to collect because yeah, you deduct. get negative points at the end of the game um yeah but it's really fun it's really beautiful um i would yeah highly recommend trying to see if you haven't already there is now a dice game that i mm. am really excited to try i just haven't been able to get a copy i need to find a copy of that yeah. or we need to go back to japan and um get as many of their games as we can yeah. again bring an empty suit okay. <laughs> fill it up <laughs> anyway that is let's, let's make, make a, a bus, bus route. route 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 and the final one so let's make a game. water river let's route. make a river route <laughs> a river route <laughs> river route um uh, mississippi queen yeah so this could not have been more perfect for our trip it really was on the murray river uh, it's quite famous for its steamboats mm. and this is mississippi queen which of course also has steamboats and so it was just perfect because in this game you each play as uh, one of these beautiful steamboats and the the miniature boat is really awesome yeah they're cute yeah and it has two little wheels that yeah. are in each of its um paddles mm -hmm. um one represents your speed and the other represents your coal and this game is a race game so you're all trying to race to a finish line but in order to win the race, you need to pick up exactly two passengers mm -hmm. um, before you get there. And all you're going to be doing on your turn is, is moving, adjusting your speed if you want to, mm. moving the, your speed that you've got enabled on your boat um, and changing direction when you need to as well. Mm. 
but the complexity of this game is that at the beginning of the game you only get at least in the basic version you only get six pieces of coal and you need to use those wisely because you can always adjust your speed up or down one but if you want to change it more than that on a turn you've got to burn coal mm. likewise you can only turn 60 degrees once on your turn if you want to turn more than that you're going to have to burn coal yeah and so what you're going to be doing is traveling through very simply traveling through these pieces of map and as someone goes into the last tile a new one is revealed or a new piece of this race and so mm -hmm. the mississippi um, river is like building out mm -hmm. and you're going to have to race through and avoid islands and along the way you're going to have to pick up passengers and this is where it gets really tricky because the passengers are going to be waiting at docks mm -hmm. in order to stop at that dock you need to land there exactly mm -hmm. but also be doing a speed of one yes so you have to slow right down and that makes sense can't to come speed to, through can't it speed like we into were the dock. in that first corner with our house, with our house just, boat. You, you don't actually stop you just slow down enough that they jump in in this game <laughs> well you do stop because you have to land exactly that's on that true. space at a speed but at of one very I guess, so you don't slow crash speed. into the, the dock yeah. Yeah. and that's where it becomes exceptionally difficult because you are trying to race each other because the person who is coming first in this game mm. as in leading the pack yeah. gets to go first yeah. in the next turn so someone can get a real runaway lead in yeah. this game um, but if you're going too fast because you're trying to get to that first position you're going to be going way too fast to pick up any of these passengers yeah. you're going to sail straight we by. often have the scenario where you're like you go so fast that then you kind of have to do a bit of a round around a loop. trip <laughs> yeah even though you're like the tile is right there and you're just kind of going around trying to slow down your speed before you can actually land yeah but what speed of one but what makes this game even harder is that you can bump each other yes so if you um, want to go through someone else's boat mm. or the space that someone else is on you can use two movement points to do that and that allows you to bump them out of the way onto an adjacent um, mm. kind of space yeah and that becomes especially problematic because you've already calculated just the exact amount of yeah. speed you need yeah. to be doing to get to this pier to pick up a passenger and just when you're about to come in to pick up that passenger someone comes and crashes into the back of the boat moves you out and or steals the passenger that you, you were trying to take. frustrate each other's plans quite yeah. a lot yes and um what was hilarious about this game is we played it we played it at five it does play six we, pl we were playing it at five mainly mm -hmm. um is that when you're all trying to get to the end point um so the finish at the end of the race mm -hmm. you also have to um come to a stop at a dock to mm -hmm. win and so you need to everyone once they had their two passengers sped up and wanted to get <laughs> yeah, to the yeah, end so a proper race at yeah that point, a yeah. proper race wanted to get to the end as fast as they could but then everybody was going way too fast when yeah. they got to the end and everyone was slamming into each other yeah and it just actually took a long time to finish off the game because no one could pull in and everyone was out of coal at this point so <laughs> we also had a scenario where we had a friend who hadn't won any of the games that when whenever we'd been playing but every time he had consistently call a win really early so declared like, himself yeah, the winner declared, was like I'm, I've got this one I can and so obviously and this one he you... and this one he did declare from now on you need to call me the Mississippi Queen <laughs> so yeah. it, he called it way too early he, he, he did call it far <laughs> too early which then put a bit of a target on his back and then this is where I don't like this sort of games because then it, it became like he was when he was quite close to winning it was just like well everyone's uh, aim is now to stop him otherwise the game is over mm -hmm. kind of thing. and so there was one time where I was like well and he was like he was so yes he'd call it early but he was so looking forward to winning his first game with us and I and he was like I was getting ready to call my mom and tell her <laughs> how like Aww. I'd finally and and I was just like and this was a time where I was like I feel like I could just like I felt like throwing the game but Not the moment was the moment was he was about to win on his next turn yes. and the only person standing in his way was Maggie yeah so Maggie had one turn and her optimal move would be to stop him from winning so that you could win in the next turn 
And she refused to make the move. I did not want to make. I'm like, I'd rather come second. I'd rather just let him, you know, take no that second, first. Only there first. is. There's three docks. Why couldn't you have first, second, third? Like a proper race. Why does it have to be like you either win or, or you don't. nothing at all? Like no, yeah. that's like that's an all or nothing. Anyway, so Maggie walked away, and we made her move for her. Yeah. I'm like, I don't want any part of this. This no. And then someone feels. else completely different won. Maggie didn't win. Someone no, else won. Yeah, yeah, one of our other friends. Because then it just became a mess. Because then it was just it was like everyone just trying to bump into each other and like yeah anyway yeah. mississippi queen is deceptively mean as a game <laughs> yes um because you are trying to bump each other and yes. race around but it was fun i enjoyed the tension of mm. like trying to work out the puzzle of like how you need yeah. to slow down and then you know people could impact you while you're doing that i didn't do particularly i was last almost the whole time around because i think very mm. early on someone bumped me and i was just like oh my whole plan, my whole strategy is gone. Yeah, I think the problem with this is often you get caught up in trying to be the first one of the earlier yeah. docks yeah. where to collect one of the passengers. You need to passengers. go past the first dock. Yeah, you need to just kind of let it sail let it, through. Yeah, sail through because then you end up getting really left behind yeah. when everyone else is sort of going ahead. Yes, yeah. and there are advanced um, rules as well. So you can mm. add in like different uh, things that slow you down, like sandbanks and things yeah. um, or debris. Yeah. Um, there's also, you know, in the, in the advanced game, you can actually stop and pick up more coal to make it a bit more competitive mm. and interesting. Um, yeah, but I think this is a kind of game that I would keep, but mm. it has a very specific occasion. Yeah. And that occasion is probably like as a, a warm up game for a group of people who like at a game day or something like it's, yeah. it's got such so low rules overhead but what's really cool about it is that the the mississippi like builds out yeah so you actually need quite need a big a lot table, of table space. space yeah it was like we actually were playing it on you know like a neoprene sort of a play mat Filled and it mat. was and it was pretty easy to move around like the whole thing uh, together to kind of make it fit but yeah, this is not some like this. You need a, a fair bit of table real you do. estate. Yeah, to but play it. I think it's just a fun one that because it's a race, everyone's like looking at the board, and mm. it just has a bit of presence about yeah, it. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Like you've yeah. got the little boats, you've got the little you know the dials. I will say with the dials, it was a little bit. Um, it was easy for it, like we had a friend that whenever he would move the um, the ship some of the dials would shift, so you mm. kind of have to keep an eye on what you know where what number you've got showing and be careful when you move them that it doesn't yeah roll around too much because hmm. then you end up with like coal that you didn't have and speed that you didn't have and some of those sorts of things yeah so for me it's a little bit too mean for me yeah i like guess not something that i enjoyed but i enjoyed seeing it come to life like seeing that that whole thing be built yeah and we also don't have a lot of race games in our collection no, so we don't yeah so yeah. i think it's cool for that reason um yeah. that is a uh, mississippi queen yeah so that is all our games but yeah. there is one more thing that we did want to talk about oh yeah and that that is that before we went away we had my sister over mm -hmm. and one thing about my sister is she she likes games and actually she really likes games yeah but we always we always kind of have to convince her to play a game yeah she like. likes them she's very good at them she's an engineer exceptionally good at them but she's just never had the bug no she never caught the bug but one thing yeah. is she really loves puzzles mm -hmm. yeah. um and during lockdown of course everyone went through this phase of doing every puzzle that yeah. they could get their hands on yeah. it was like a huge craze for a while because then everyone got what puzzles <laughs> and everyone, no one wanted to see puzzles ever yeah. again i totally relate to yeah. that but we when in a previous episode of back chat mm. we actually spoke about a really cool campaign that we came across mm. called Quezzle. Yeah. And um, after that, we were contacted by Quezzle mm -hmm. and they offered to send us a copy for us to have a go at. So yeah. when my sister came down for the weekend, um, we were able to get this to the table. Mm. And you know what? It reminded me the power of puzzles. But in, but in particular, I really enjoyed this one much more than a usual puzzle mm. because all of the pieces are made out of wood. Yeah. And it has a beautiful quality yes. to it like yeah. they feel really beautiful yeah um and the picture that we were doing was um of all of the hot air balloons it's so vibrant and beautiful i actually really really like the yeah the image itself that you're, you're, Cappad you're bringing together Cappadocia. yeah yeah the, yeah because yeah? the, yeah, it's based on the the air hot air balloon is it like a competition or like a uh, no, it's just an area in Turkey. Oh, where they just... Yeah, yeah, where they do this. But even like, you know, even on the ground where you have like the markets and like <coughs> different areas. The other thing is that it comes in four parts. So it's like four p 
puzzles that then you can bring together to create one big Yeah, world. and you can just buy one. Yeah. Um, or you can buy all four and piece them together. They do a whole range of puzzles, but this one is mm. just... So it's beautiful. so beautiful mm. that it was like for the first time I was like, I actually don't want to break it up. I maybe want to mount it onto mm. like put glue over it and mount it into our gaming yeah. room because it is really colorful and vibrant and beautiful. But yeah. anyway, I was going to say the pieces are made of wood, so they're really texturally lovely. But yes. what's really interesting is the shapes of the pieces. Yeah. So the shapes of the pieces are sometimes um, like some of the balloons were actually round pieces, mm. which is like, okay, that's interesting. But then there were other pieces that were like, the outline made it look like um, so someone with a sword. Yeah, an animal yeah. or a yeah, yeah or specific an elephant shapes. Yeah. or something. And yet it all comes together yeah. into this like beautiful picture. And so I just thought that was a really fun. The other thing is that when you finish the puzzle, there are extra pieces. Mm -hmm. And those extra pieces can be put together, which I could not do. I'm no, so I bad at this. We so, needed your sister for this. So the yeah. sister, the engineer, was able to put together yeah. the like, remaining pieces to create a 3D animal. <laughs> yeah. And that was really cool. And she really enjoyed that too. Yeah. And just... All together, we just had so much fun with this. Yeah, we, it's really we did, pleasant. Yeah. yeah, we did all four puzzles over a weekend. They're not particularly difficult if you're no. looking at the picture. If you're not looking at the picture, quite difficult. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I really, I don't know. I just really liked it. I thought it was really vibrant and cool. Yeah. Their whole selling point is around this like quest and puzzle combo. Mm. Like that's why it's called Quezzle. The quest part. Mm, yeah, because yeah, it's it's sort of meant to be almost like 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 a little quest or mini or yeah different mini games that you unlock once mm. you've built it out. And there's a um, what do you call it augmented, augmented reality, reality yeah. app that was kind of cool when it first triggered, but then it was a bit glitchy, and so yeah. it was it was. So on the first puzzle, we like scanned this particular piece, and it was really cool because then you saw one of the pieces like fly over mm. um, the puzzle itself, yeah. and I was like, this is amazing. But then I couldn't get it to work for the no. rest of them. After that, it's like, I, we and we got tried stuck. Android yeah. and Apple, so that was a little yeah. bit disappointing. Yeah. Um, but really, the so for me, this is just an excellent puzzle. Yeah. Like I like I would highly recommend this just for the puzzle itself. Uh, it agree. doesn't need the quest. No. Um, no. It's sort yeah. of like if you manage to get it working, which we that's great. And then cool. Yeah. And there's kind of a little story and things yeah. that you can find along the way yeah. and things which um, probably might be more fun for kids, but for us, Possibly, it, like yeah. I wasn't so interested. The puzzle itself was difficult enough for me because um, yeah. I don't do a lot of puzzles. Uh, it's just beautiful. It's stunning. It's, it's, it's just something really that stunning, like yeah. yeah, it's like you could totally uh, and and the image itself is really mm -hmm. intricate like there yes. are things going on yeah. in the puzzle that like along the way you're like made me laugh mm -hmm. or just like it's just a really detailed yeah. beautiful picture yeah. kind of like a as detailed as like a where's wally where's waldo yeah kind yeah, of yeah. image so yeah. yeah really really beautiful really high quality puzzle um, yeah, so we just wanted to talk about Quezzel. Yeah, and the wood actually, like, it, and some people like this, some people won't like this, but I do find like the you can the smell of the wood because it's like a laser cut mm. wood. Um, yeah, it's nice. I, the only I thing is like you it. can't like slide it together. You really have to lift yeah, the pieces be, like, on the and top, put yeah. them right in, yeah. like trying to fit things together sometimes. Yeah, sometimes a bit like, like oh, okay, yeah, there. with the interesting yeah. shapes. But yeah, yeah, that is Quezzel. We had a lot of fun with that. And yeah, I, I, I love that picture. Like, I'm it's gorgeous. It I, is, yeah, I want to kind of, I don't know, if, like, what's the word? It's not really laminate, but it's like... Yeah, I think you can it, get a glue that you can put over yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, to then mount it because it's, it's that beautiful yeah, image. it is really beautiful. Yeah. Oh, and the other thing is when you have the four puzzles, you can actually replace some of the edge pieces mm. so that it makes them it all connect them. together. So yeah. it locks the whole puzzle together. Really clever. Yeah. Um, anyway, that's Quezzel. And that is all we have for Small mm. Talk uh, for this fortnight. Thank you for watching. And if Maggie doesn't cut this off, please like <laughs> please like the video subscribe if you haven't already and we'll be back with more board games this week bye for now bye